Hello fellow rogues, it's Leo K. I'm gonna talk about some things today that I've been inspired to talk about by a few friends of mine and other people asking me for them. So in the background is some Assassin's Creed Syndicate and I'll just be running, climbing, driving, and roping roughly from one end of London to the other. I know a few videos of this already exist on YouTube, but they're just kind of, you know, plain videos by themselves and this is something different. Anyway, so it's basically just some backing visuals for what I'm gonna be talking about right now. So as most of you know, I recently finished my Assassin's Creed Syndicate No Upgrades playthrough, and that's something I'm quite proud of. When I started playing Unity that way, I was pretty certain that it could be beaten under those kinds of restrictions, but I really wasn't sure if, uh, if Syndicate could be beaten like that, because Syndicate is much more focused on numbers, statistics and upgrading like a lot of the gameplay in syndicate is much more abstracted out than in unity where what level you are and how much damage you do and how much health you have in syndicate those actually matter a lot more now fortunately i did manage to finish syndicate under the no upgrade restrictions and now i'm just doing some mop up on that game Basically what that means is I'm going through it to produce as many stealth videos as I can from it, both Ghost and Reaper. And I'll probably also mine out the DLCs for it too, you know, Jack the Ripper and The Last Maharaja, also doing both Ghost and Reaper on those as well. Um, and I'll probably do that for a few of the side missions. So while that will take me some time, I've got a few other things planned for after that. Now, you probably know that I'd been playing Watch Dogs 2 before getting back to playing Syndicate, so once I finish up everything I want to do in Syndicate, I'm going to be doing a lot of Watch Dogs 2 stuff. Single mission videos are guaranteed, again both Ghost and Reaper. I don't currently have any plans to do any kind of full playthrough of Watch Dogs 2, either no upgrades or something else, but we'll see what happens in the future, we'll see how much I end up liking the game for that kind of thing. But what I'm most excited for in the farther future is to record a no upgrades run of Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, which is one of my favorite Assassin's Creed games ever made. Now I've already finished a no upgrades run of Shadow of Mordor on stream, but the archives have probably been deleted already, and I know for a fact that uh, it's possible to do it in that game, but the randomized and procedurally generated nature of its enemies and bosses will keep things interesting, so you know, we just never know. Now, about what's gonna happen hopefully soonish, because those things are all kind of things that will take me a while to do, you know, what I just said, all of those will probably be in the coming months as opposed to the coming weeks. First of all, my friend Georgia asked me to make some guides on stealth games, and I'm writing a script for a video guide called How to Play and Enjoy Stealth Games. It'll cover the fundamentals and basics of stealth, which will let you take those skills into any stealth game ever made. I'll also try to explain how to analyze and break down a new stealth game when you're just starting to play it and you have no idea what it's about, so that you get skilled at it much faster. Basically, I know a lot of people that would like to enjoy stealth a lot more, it's just hard to feel effective at stealth unless you have a lot of patience for trial and error. And one thing that a lot of people probably don't do is, in the beginning, I really recommend loading up a certain level, mission, or area and messing around in it, like playing with the guards, seeing how they react, and when you get detected, restart the checkpoint and ask yourself why they caught you, and just do that over and over again for that one area. It will be less boring than you think, because especially after you get it done, you will have learned things about the AI, you will have learned things about the items and the tools and the weapons that the player has. You will basically know a lot more about the game, so even though, yeah, you've, you've been pretty great at this one area now, you can take that into any other area, and even when you get caught, it's fine, because you feel pretty effective at sneaking around, you know, after you re-enter stealth. Now, that's not really so much for this video, it's not for right now, I don't know why I went on such a big tangent, but well, I guess you could call it a little sneak peek of what you're gonna be getting. 
Now next, my friends Daniel and Kira both asked me to make more of this type of video of commentary over footage, and that's because I quite enjoy thinking about and talking about video game design. Some of my favorite channels on YouTube are Joseph Anderson, Game Maker's Toolkit, Matthew Matosis, Super Bunny Hop, H Bomber Guy, you know all those people. In addition to that, Dan tells me I've got a good podcast voice, which I've been told by a number of people in addition to him. Now whether that's true or not, I think that's something for each individual viewer of mine to decide. I can't really... I can't tell you what you think of me. I can't tell you whether I'm... I've got a good voice for you. But when it comes to talking about game design and about the good and bad of stealth games, I've already written a, a partial script for my thoughts on Assassin's Creed Unity. The Assassin's Creed subreddit constantly gets questions about things like, why is Unity so hated? Why do people dislike Unity? I haven't played Assassin's Creed Unity. Is it a bad game? What makes Unity a bad game? And you know, while I've seen a lot of people nowadays step up and defend Unity, I don't often see too many people step in to explain why Unity is such a disappointing experience, even after it's completely patched and free of bugs. I think maybe the reason for that is those people eventually just got tired of explaining to people, like, look, these are the facts, like, this is what makes Unity bad, like, this is what makes Unity... I guess, it just an inconsistent and not very well-designed gaming experience. I definitely understand that people would get tired of constantly talking about that, because it's like, eventually you just stop getting a return on that kind of thing. Like, you're, you're putting a lot of yourself into thinking about a game that you dislike already, to explain to other people what about its design is so unprofessional and what about its design is so, you know, illogical and inconsistent. Eventually you just kind of would give up on that kind of thing. But I'm going to try my hand at doing that. And if I enjoy making that type of video, I'll also do one on what I actually loved about Unity. Because, despite being a bad game, it has good in it. There are lessons to learn from the things Assassin's Creed Unity did right. So yeah, the takeaway from all this is that you're probably going to get a few more videos with me talking in them, since now that I have a nice microphone, it makes sense for me to take advantage of that. The nice bite-sized stealth videos, as always, will never stop, because aside from showing my mastery of certain areas, those types of videos also provide a kind of documentation of what a quote-unquote perfect run of certain missions would look like. And personally, I feel that that's valuable. That kind of documentation and archiving can help both players and developers see which areas were more or less interesting, can see how the design of an area impacts the player's flow through it, and things like that. And the last thing I'll mention again is that I appreciate when people ask me to do things or make requests for certain videos. If it's possible for me to do it or if I have the time, I'd love to. And if you've already requested something once and I haven't done it yet, put it in the comments again and remind me. I'm human too and I forget sometimes. If I don't have the game you want me to play, I might even consider buying it for myself just to make the video, so in addition to inspiring me to make content for the channel, you might also show me a cool game that I didn't know I would like. A little disclaimer despite me saying that, I think it is good to mention that there's always something for me to do on this channel. Like, there's always the next video to make, there's always something new to do. I'm at the stage in my, I suppose, YouTube career that I never really run out of ideas. Like, I always have ideas for things to do, and I'm always gonna do them. The reason why I'm not uploading every day is because, you know, I do other things too. I'm a writer, I'm writing a book, I have a job that I have to work at, and, you know, all those other things. But generally speaking, um... Yeah, like, I, generally speaking, I don't run out of ideas for videos to make, but 
Even though that is the case, I do appreciate requests. I do appreciate people asking me to, you know, try doing something. Just because if I ever do run out of ideas, I have I have you guys backing me up, basically. I have you guys being like, hey, you don't know what to do? Try doing this. And I'll be like, oh, cool, I'll give it a shot. So that's actually very, very useful to me. Um... We'll see how well that kind of approach to YouTubing works. We'll see how well that kind of approach to my workflow will turn out. The whole accepting ideas from other people. I don't really think it would be super problematic. I think it would be a good thing to try. Anyway, cheers everyone. Thanks for listening. And I'll meet you all in the shadows next time.